And we begin with a new state of emergency, this time spring break on the beach. Night after night, we have seen big, unruly crowds on South Beach engaging in sporadic violence and committing crimes. Despite a large police presence, but the police have been pretty much overwhelmed by this rowdy crowd of spring breakers who have thrown out all their inhibitions and respect for the law. It is out the window. So Miami Beach leaders yesterday afternoon took action, imposing an 8 p.m. curfew on the entertainment district and closing the causeways to the city to all but residents, hotel guests and workers. Let's get right to Miami Beach. Police Chief Richard Clemens, who is with us live this morning after a long night. Boy, Chief, we sure do appreciate you being with us today. Good morning, Michael Glennon, and thank you for asking me to be on. Chief, we are so glad you are with us. So give us a report. I mean, it was, as we said, only 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon that the curfew was announced. Uh, and we have shown video here on Local 10 News this morning showing a big crowd out on South Beach on Ocean Drive in the vicinity of 9 p.m. So overall, how did the curfew go? The curfew went well. Uh, we obviously, with the, the late notification, expected there to be uh, some residuals, uh, meaning people that had not heard that the curfew was in place. Uh, again, at 9 o'clock, we started actively moving in and throughout the, uh, the entertainment district, uh, and people started gradually moving out of there and back to their, either their hotels or to their Airbnbs. Chief, you've been with the department way longer than you've been chief. I know you're pretty much your whole career. Um, the spring break is not new. Spring break on South Beach has been going on year after year after year. What is different about this year that all of a sudden there are these unprecedented moves to sort of crack down? What, what's happened? I think that, uh, again, this is a combination of COVID uh, and, and also um, really for the most part, what we're dealing with in law enforcement as a um, uh, the, the backlash from, from last summer and then the George Floyd, George Floyd situation. Uh, you know, COVID has had people pent up for quite a, quite a uh, long time, again, well over a year. Uh, people are looking to get out. Uh, and then the other part of it is that, you know, people that are traveling here from other parts of the country, um, you know, again, they're, they're, you know, I think they're coming here to kind of unwind a little bit, but, but they're, I think they're also pushing the gambit of, of obeying the rules. Uh, and, you know, we've gone on social media, we've gone on the networks repeatedly, asking for people to, if you're going to come down here, if you're going to want to enjoy yourself, that's fine. But if you're going to push those limits and you're going to break the rules, then we have an obligation to intervene and stop it. Uh, and, you know, what we've seen is probably more of a, a frequency of, of those people actually coming forward and, and pushing uh, those limits uh, and, uh, and, again, challenging our officers quite a bit. It's, it's been a different environment this year as opposed to last year. Yeah. Chief Clements, uh, when we say spring break, at least in the media, generally you're talking about college students coming down, going to the beach, drinking too much beer, uh, having a good time, looking to hook up maybe, uh, but nothing really malevolent. And I've got to say, looking at the, the way some of the incidents that have happened and the assaults on your officers, I mean, some serious stuff going on down there, dangerous, dangerous stuff. Yeah, Michael, it has been. And, and more so what we've seen this year is it, you know, when we go in and we, we try to go ahead and effectuate an arrest for someone that's, that's violating the law, what we've seen is the crowd then uh, encircle us, encircle our officers uh, in an attempt to be able to either you know, break the person free or to stop the, the, the arrest itself. Uh, it's been a challenge. We, we've seen that all over the country, but it actually started to materialize this year uh, during uh, the spring break period. But, uh, you know, again, that's why we've had to beef up our numbers. Uh, you know, it is an officer safety issue. Uh, you know, we are trying to do our job as best we can. And, you know, and we're, when we're stopped from doing that or when people try to stop us from doing that, it, it becomes a bigger issue at that point. Yes. Chief, this, the focus that we have right now, we meaning the public and the news and you and your officers, are crimes and how to stop them. And, and boy, we've seen people try to eat and run, create violence in restaurants. Uh, one of the Clevelander closed to avoid a stampede. Mm -hmm. But, but really, behind the scenes, there are a lot of kids here who are not committing crimes at all, who are here for a good time. We just saw some video of, I, I believe it was taken by our colleague Janine Stanwood earlier this week, of just a lot of kids spontaneously singing and dancing. Might it be that it, because there's such a focus on what might happen, and less of a focus on programming for people who are coming from elsewhere, who may not have a lot of money, who just want some free concerts, whatever. Is that something 
that maybe the beach can do to avoid a sort of predisposed expectation of crime? You know, that, that's something for, obviously, for uh, our commissioners to take up uh, with the mayor uh, and, and more important, our, our special events section coming in and, and seeing if we can find things to be able to, you know, to, to streamline that, that uh, energy. Uh, you know, our, our job is to police the streets and make sure that people understand, you know, what the rules are as it pertains to that. And, and you know, we've been very good with that. When we see, you know, people, they're just, they're just in the street and they're dancing and they're having fun. Um, we're okay with that. And, and we're, we're very tolerant of that. You know, obviously, we have a concern about the social distancing aspect. Most people are not wearing masks down here. They're, they're really not. And, you know, and, and even though we've still tried to go ahead and pass out masks, it, it really is a, an effort that it's an uphill, it's an uphill battle uh, when that happens. But, um, uh, you know, I, I would leave that up to the, uh, the mayor and the commission to be able to determine whether or not that's the best uh, course of action yeah. to take. Uh, Chief Clement, uh, as you just said, as Lena just said, a lot of the people who are here on South Beach are only intent on having a good time. They don't want to break the law. On the other hand, your officers have seen, seized a lot of guns and made felony arrests. Give us some of the statistics. How many guns, how many arrests have you made? To date, since February the 3rd, we're over 1,000 arrests, uh, of which I, I believe 40% of them are for felonies. Uh, we've also seized an excess of 80 firearms. Uh, you know, so we, and, and I think last night alone we seized four. Uh, so people are coming down here, uh, you know, they're coming down here and they're arming themselves or they're armed before they get here if they're traveling by car. Uh, and it's, it's more of a situation where our officers really need to be uh, on their guard uh, when they are interacting with people that are on the street. Uh, we've had situations where, you know, people have run and we've seen and as they're running away, a firearm falls out of, out of, their, uh, out of their, their, their grasp or, or their, their waistline. Uh, so it, it is a, 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 a phenomenon that we have not seen. I'm alarmed by the number of firearms that we have seized. Uh, it, and again, uh, it, I think it's, it's more, um, more of an issue that's going on right now across the board in society where we're seeing people arm themselves even more nowadays than we did before. Is there a, a constitutional way to address that prior to they and their, them and their guns coming into a city? Is there... Is there a way on the front end to avoid the criminal elements so that this spring break can go on without that danger and to you and your officers? I don't think so. I, you know, and again, I think you alluded to earlier that, that there are people that are down here that are really trying to enjoy uh, Miami Beach and, and South Florida, and, and they're, they're abiding by the rules. But, but there are those that intermix with them that aren't, and they have uh, really, for the most part, no desire uh, to, to be able to uh, abide by the rules. <clears throat> They, they push that and they push those limits. Uh, more oftentimes than not as well, when we're, we're arresting people on the street for improper carry or carrying concealed firearm, uh, they're coming from open carry states. Uh, and so they're, they're thinking that that now goes ahead and transcends or goes across those lines and, and that Florida is, is in the same boat. And the reality of it is that there are restrictions associated with carrying a firearm in the state of Florida. And, and you know, again, the responsible thing for people that are doing that is to call up and find out what those restrictions are. We are talking with Miami Beach Police Chief Rick Clements, and we're going to be joined after the break by Mayor Dan Gulbert. Stay where you are. We are back talking about spring break emergency measures on Miami Beach with Miami Beach's police chief Rick Clements and joining the conversation now, Miami Beach's Mayor Dan Gelber. Mayor, good morning. I know you also have had a long night and we sure do appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Mayor Gelber. Thank you for having me. So I'm just going to go there and bring up the elephant in the room and what we hear from our viewers all the time. They're looking at this action on spring break on Miami Beach. They are in a time when we are in a national conversation over how uh, black people in different cities are treated by police, inequities in criminal justice. And now they are looking at this kind of action on spring break. Mayor, if you would address why the actions are being taken and on this event with these crowds, being a rowdy crowd is certainly not illegal, but the type of preparation uh, that was made for this particular event and those concerns that we're hearing? Well, listen, I, I think these are very important conversations to have nationally and everywhere, and we're having them uh, in our city as well. I was a, a federal prosecutor. I did civil rights prosecutions, including uh, arrestees uh, and, and how they were treated, so I'm pretty aware of policing. But I can tell you in our city, 
you just look at the videos. We're not we're not targeting a a group of people. We're targeting conduct, and the line is pretty bright for us, which is if if you can't uh, keep streets safe, then you you know you're not doing your job, and it, and and that's what's guiding our actions. We are you know I'm very proud of our police force. We're one of the first I think in the region to have body cameras. Uh, we teach de-escalation. We do all the things that a modern progressive police force needs to do, and we're always looking to improve and listen. But this and what you – just look at the videos. If somebody, uh, uh, you know, shoots a, a weapon and, and 400 people start to sort of riot through the streets, we, we can't suspend law enforcement, and I don't think we're going to. So we're targeting conduct, and, I, and not just conduct but misconduct. And I think that's very important. And by the way, um, you know, uh, the officers are, you know, we don't like these arrests because it endangers officers. It endangers arrestees, often many of whom are showing bad judgment because they're drunk or high. It, it endangers uh, bystanders. So we don't like doing this. But the only option we have right now is to make sure we can control our, our streets we are no community should endure the videos that uh, you see right now, and it's certainly not uh, what our city is going to endure. So, I feel like this is challenging, but I feel like we don't really have any other option. Yeah, uh, Mayor Gelber, a very pragmatic question to try to bring your city under control. Uh, you and Chief Clements have had to reach out to Coral Gables Police. I think maybe another police department. This is expensive. How much is this costing you? Well, I've reached out, and we've reached out to many people. Um, uh, you know, one of my first calls was to the uh, Mayor Levine Cava because, frankly, this area, uh, you know, we, almost everybody we arrest and almost everybody who's a victim, if there are victims uh, in some of the arrests, are out-of-towners. Uh, you know, less than about 10 percent of the arrestees are our residents. Ninety percent are from other parts. And that's because we sort of police a playground uh, for people coming here because we are an economic resource for the county, if not the region. So my view is that our residents shouldn't be asked to endure and 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 pay for all this themselves. And frankly, it's an important economic engine. And she understood that. She immediately sent, I, I don't know if it's dozens or probably more than dozens at this point of extra police. I talked to Mayor Suarez, Carl Gables as well. We've had FHP in increased amounts as well. I spoke to the governor's chief of staff about it just yesterday. So we're, we're reaching out because we don't, we don't think this should be just a Miami Beach problem. We think it's, it's a challenge for the whole community. And chief, we really hope that we, yeah, we could get yeah, their help. Yeah, for sure. Uh, chief Clemens, there's a 3 o'clock emergency commission meeting today on the beach. What, do you, what would you like to see your commission give you by way of maybe some more front-end support, um, code enforcement, uh, things that would pave the way for a crackdown prior to crowds coming in and being able to take advantage, things like that. What do, what do you want from the commission today? Well, you know, I, again, the commission is going to come together this, uh, this afternoon. They're going to talk about, obviously, the, the emergency orders you know, and what's going on in the city. Uh, and they'll discuss options, I guess, in the future, and that, that would be for them to do. But, you know, the most important thing that we can get from the commission is support. Uh, and they've been phenomenal. Uh, both the mayor and, and all the commissioners have been very supportive of the effort. They also understand that this hasn't been a, a two-day event for the men and women of the Miami Beach Police Department. This has been going on for five weeks now, and there's been a lot of sacrifices that have been made on, on uh, the officers' end in order to be able to accommodate the need uh, to do our best to keep uh, the, uh, the community safe. Uh, just the events over uh, Thursday and Friday of this past week, and, and you know, we, were, we were pushed to our limits, but by virtue of uh, their training, their commitment, and more important, their tactics, uh, we were able to get through it. But I, I just couldn't take the chance uh, that we would let one more night go by uh, and, and something happened that, that would have resulted in, in, in a lot of people getting hurt. Uh, and uh, again, the mayor supported me. The, the commission has been supportive of that. Uh, and the men and women of Miami Beach Police Department went out and did a phenomenal job last night of holding it. Chief Rick Clements, we appreciate your time after a long night, a long several days, and Mayor Dan Gelber, Always good to speak with you. Thanks very much. We'll be at the commission meeting virtually at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Great to have you. Thanks so Thanks, much. Thank, Thank you. you.